in terms of the structure from here, so we get to hear from Sandra first of all, and then Lance, and then um, their reflections on the past and what that means for the future. And then Ross is going to have a bit of a, a crack at thinking about this year in particular and where, you know, where things have come from and where we might go. Um, we're going to hold our discussion and our questions to after all three speakers, if that's okay. So I'll welcome Sandra to start, please. Okay, thank you. the RBMS for this honour, which makes me very honoured and also very humble to receive. Um, I'm going to take you back in time to the start of the society, and one of the reasons the society has been, I guess, so important to me is that the, um, the emergence and the growth of the society um, paralleled, paralleled the growth and emergence of my career in river management. Um, so let me take you back to the mid-1980s when it all began. And so let's do some overall time travel and just set the scene. Let's think about the mid 1980s. So we had Prince Charles and Princess Diana still happily married with two little, a toddler and a baby, Harry Wills, Michael Jackson in the top 40, Bob Hawke as Prime Minister, John Kane as Premier, no internet, no iPad, no iPods, no iPhones, no mobile phones were an exotic um, accessory, very expensive. Um, Google Maps didn't exist. We were still driving around and um, the more poor and fortunate person on the field team had to sit in the back of the four wheel drive, um, putting together aerial photographs to figure out where we were, and navigating off the old topographic sheets. Um, the idea of setting up the RBMS was conceived at a meeting in Stratford in 1984. Um, I, became in, I first became involved with the RBMS in 1985 um, at a workshop held at the old Rural Water Commission's offices in Armadale. Um, at that time, I was starting on postgraduate study and looking to develop a research project on rivers. And my supervisor suggested that I go along to this workshop because it would be good, a gathering of people working around the industry and it would be a good way to get ideas and meet people and make contacts. I guess very much the reason people these days come to RBMS meetings. Um, only that at that time there was no about RBMS, but just a group of interested people. Um, the industry and um, the university environment were quite different back then too. And in a lot of ways, when the RDFS was established, it was quite cutting edge, quite different and quite new. Um, so university teaching and research was very much confined into the boundaries of specific dif disciplines. It wasn't interdisciplinary like it is today. So you either did engineering or biology or geology or chemistry, but you wouldn't try to integrate them. And that was... Um, I guess, structured by how the university was organised and also a consequence of how the funding streams were held so that academics went for funding through ARC and if you went to engineering and sciences panel, for example, as a geomorphologist I would have done, um, they wouldn't have been interested in a project with biological pensions. That would have been not something they would have put their money into or vice versa. Um, even geography, which had historically been a discipline of inter integration, was that at, at that time there was sort of a backlash against the old paradigm of regional geography as being too descriptive, and people, the, 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 the thing to do at that time to, to gain credibility would be to work in a very narrow, focused, specialised, sub-discipline field. So it'd either be a geomorphologist or a hydrologist or a biogeographer, but you wouldn't try and integrate or combine those, let alone try to integrate any human geography into it. Um, so, and... And also the river management industry was also very different to today. It was very much a man's game, an engineer's game. So the institutions were dominated by the River Improvement Trust to set out to improve the rivers, which meant improve the flood conveyance and improve the stability of the rivers. In fact, one of my early recollections was heading out to do some field work with some, some colleagues, and the father of one of my colleagues, who was also a fairly elderly um, river engineer, said at the time, you're not going... He basically said to, uh, he said to me, you're a girl, but why would you want to be doing drains with the boys? Girls don't do drains. <laughs> so, two things that are drains and boys. <laughs> That's all changed now too. Um, so, and government departments and authorities, instead of having, I guess, again, communication and multidisciplinary approaches, very much the departments worked separately. There was no formal interaction um, very little formal, informal interaction and no integration. Um, again, they did their business and they didn't talk to each other and there wasn't too much informal communication between them. 
So getting back to the 1985 workshop then that set up the RBMS, um, that was quite cutting edge to actually have the idea of bringing people from various disciplines to work together, to work on projects that combined and integrated things, um, to bring people from various government departments together to talk and to find out how the work that they were doing related to what someone else was doing and look at linkages um, and working in how to those views, look at those linkages and how to get a better outcome by actually talking up to others in a different department, working on the same problem but from a different angle. So the society was set up with um, two underlying objectives. Um, the first was to pr promote integrated management of rivers. So it's integrating across disciplines, integrating across agencies and departments. And the second is to promote management on a captured basis. Um, the, the two main things. So in regard to integrated management, I guess even the way the co committee was set up initially, was symbolic of that. So the inaugural committee um, had four senior people, and the key office holders were four senior people from the four main government, government departments that related to rivers. So we had Colin Turnbull, who was the head of the rivers and streams section of the Rural Water Commission, uh, Dom Thompson, who was chief engineer, I think, at DVA, Dan Valley Authority, John Senior, who was, I think, chief drainage engineer at the Melbourne and Metropolitan Board of Works, uh, not Melbourne Water as we know it today, but. <laughs> Board of Works, and Ron Hodges, who was Director of Crown Lands and Survey. So we had commitment at various senior levels from people across four, four agencies um, that I guess to, people, to everyone else in the industry also symbolised at that level a very strong commitment for communication integration. And the RBMS in those early years played a very, very important role in terms of bringing people at all levels to get to, um, together across the field of river and catchment management. So we had lots of seminars and conferences, um, quite well attended, hundreds of people, some of them, um, in the early days. And River Basin News was um, eagerly awaited and sought after. Remember, we didn't have Facebook, we didn't have internet, World Wide Web. Um, so particularly in the early days, that was avidly read as a way of finding out what people in other aspects of the industry were doing. Um, and I guess as time passed, um, the industry itself became more integrated, so in the early 90s, the catchment, um, the cooperative research centres were established. Um, so the CRC for catchment hydrology, freshwater ecology, which later, they later become a water. Um, and they, in terms of how their research project programs were set up, they were intended to be interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary. So instead of coming from a situation where even people in university departments do in different uh, subject areas we can talk to each other. Um, these cooperative research centres were actually providing funding for people to sit down and work together on problems. So that integration was being fostered um, now within the institutions. And we also had the Catchment and Land Protection Act um, passed in 1994, which provided a government institutional framework again that um, promoted more focused management with the um, Victorian Catchment Management Council sitting at the top level and then the CMAs. Um, at the regional implementation level, so that's the policy advisory group and implementation group. And the RBMS, in terms of establishing that legislation, played a role in terms of, well, the RBMS members were the kind of the key people driving development of that legislation, and then the RBMS, RBMS itself had a formal role in terms of facilitating some of the consultation on the various drafts of the legislation. Um, so by the turn of the century, the RBMS um, had almost become a victim of um, some of the changes in the industry and its own success in terms of bringing people together. The, the people were, the, there were all these various venues for people to talk that I guess RBMS events became less important because there were CRC functions, people were actually working together in the CNAs, and um, there was some decline. I guess there's, there's a lot of competition, and particularly some of these other players like the CRC is much more cashed up than the RBMS, so they could provide quite sort of much sexier events than, <laughs> um, than we could, and more opulent events. Now, I mean, well, from what I can see today from the presentations, like I said, the RBMS still has an important role. Uh, maybe increasingly important now in terms of um, with the CRCs now having, I guess, gone through the heyday and I guess, I guess having peaked and um, changing again, and also in terms of the instability in government, the various changes there. Um, but there is maybe an increasing role again for RBMS to provide it a forum outside of government for that integration and discussion to occur um, amongst people working in different parts of river and catchment management. 
Um, so with regard to catchment management, I guess the progress in that area has been, in my view, patchier. Um, again, we've seen within the industry compared to the mid-1980s, um, there, there has been a, a shift to greater um, emphasis on catchments in terms of river management. So we had the COAG 1996 water reforms that basically required water planning to be done on a catchment basis. Um, that wasn't necessarily the case prior to the COAG reforms. And then we see things like the Murray-Darling Basin Plan, the plan to establish a catchment basis. So in the sort of water, water quantity, water quality area, I think um, catchments have become quite established as a basis of planning, um, but less so in other areas. So land management, for example, land use planning. Um, it's done on the basis of local government areas rather than catchments. And while one certainly, in making a land use planning decision, can consider its catchment context, one is not obligated to necessarily think about the catchment context. So there's still room for improvement there. Um, the RBMS also played some role in education and research, and for some years I chaired the Education and Research Subcommittee. Um, and over the years we had, I guess, there were two main initiatives in the education area. We, um, at, at, um, we set up and administered the Ernest Jackson Memorial Research Grants that were um, given to postgraduate students to um, encourage and promote research in, in areas of river and catchment management. And also we worked and lobbied for and um, developed ideas regarding a training course in river and catchment management that the RDMS, RDM itself never delivered, but Eventually, there was training course was established in the university, the Graduate Certificate in um, Catchment and Waterway Management, um, which I think is also, I guess, linked back into the RBMS in terms of one of the graduates now being members on, on the committee of the RBMS. There. So in conclusion, I'd like to thank the RBMS for the honour of the life membership. Um, and also, in a broader terms, I'd like to thank the RBMS members past and present. Um, and particularly um, those that have helped form my career and form the industry into what it is today, um, for the role of the RBMS in helping to build and shape the catchment management industry and um, the industry which I've been privileged to work. And I'd also like to thank the current members and the current committees for the, the award. Thank you.